Hello, Graham Roberts here. In this uh, session, we're going to be taking the foundation work that we made in a previous session where we created the uh, basic um, model of the solar system. We had a celestial body and we had a planet and we had a gas giant and we said that in Java terms of inheritance that a planet is a celestial body and a gas giant is a planet. Now what we're going to do in this session is we're going to create an array of planets. So we're going to actually represent, model, uh, using a list in Java, the planets of the solar system and, of course, Sol, the star that is at the centre, which is the sun. Right, now, there were nine planets. There were Mercury, Venus, Earth, the blue planet, Mars, the red planet, Jupiter, which is a gas giant, Satan, oh, sorry, Saturn, not really a rebel, and Neptune, gas giant as well, and Uranus, and Pluto. Now Pluto, poor old Pluto, got booted out of the solar system classification. And uh, we have eight planets. However, there is a ninth planet. Planet nine is a hypothetical ninth planet in the outer region of the solar system. Its gravitational effect could explain the peculiar clustering of orbits for a group of extreme trans-Neptunian uh, and so on. Okay, well, we're not going to have that ninth planet. We're just going to stick with the eight. Um, so we're looking at the solar system. And here they are again in their resplendent glory but modelled. And there's a point to be made here. That any model, and you can see there's a kind of difference between this model representation, which is of course a drawing, and the models earlier, which were able to be purchased and were little bit lit, lit, literally solid balls that or spheres that you could hold. In our model, we're just going to basically see the output of data about the nine celestial bodies, that is the sun and the eight planets. And notice here that Saturn has rings, but of course you knew that, didn't you? There's the rings. Well, also, uh, Jupiter has rings. You may not know that. It has four rings. So we can classify a planet as being a celestial body that basically doesn't have rings and a gas giant as having rings. So I hope you understand that. So that that part is not a mystery of what we're trying to represent or model. We want a list because these planets are all in orbit around the sun. And they are in a list, aren't they? And in fact, they are in an order. Now, we're going to have a list that is not ordered, or at least it will be ordered, but only in the sense that the we will put the um, planets, gas giants, celestial body in the order that we see here on the picture in terms of distance from the sun. But we haven't got an actual value for distance from the sun in our model. We could have one, but we don't have one at the moment. So 
So in BlueJ we have what we had before, only actually I've changed the coding in these, the source code. We have a celestial body, and let's look at the celestial body because it is in fact the superclass. And uh, what we can see is it has a name, a mass, and a diameter. It does not have distance from the sun, but we could put that in as an instance variable, couldn't we? If we did that, then all of the other planets and gas giants would also have that as an instance variable because a planet is a celestial body. It extends the celestial body. So it has, a planet has a type that is terrestrial gas giant and it has an integer instance variable for number of moons. It currently doesn't have distance from the sun. So just think about that. If we're adding an instance variable for distance from the sun, would we put it into the celestial body or would we put it into planet? Because the celestial body does it have a distance from the sun if really the celestial body is in fact representing the sun, the star at the center? If we had in celestial body the distance from the sun, we could set it of course to zero, that the sun is zero kilometers from itself. Or we could put it into planet and then we would have in gas giant, which inherits from planet, it extends planet, it is a planet, it would also have distance from the sun. Well, I hope you'll agree with me that it makes most sense to have the extra dimension, the extra information, the extra data, in planet so that it is extended by gas giant which has it automatically inherits it well we're not going to do that in this session although that's something you might like to do um, what we're going to do instead is show how we can represent all of the eight planets as well as the the sun and to use an array list. So let's look at celestial body again. And what has it got that's different? Well, the answer is nothing. So let's go back to planet. Has that got something different? Well, have a look. No, it doesn't have anything different either. So where are we going to put our list? It's not here either. Well, maybe you don't believe me that this is representing the, the solar system, uh, all nine entities. Well, let's have a look. In main, the only class left, we have the list here. So we have a list of type celestial body such that a solar system is instantiated to be a new array list and the diamond operator here represents the type which is celestial body. Then we add the celestial bodies to the list, having created the list. So we add the Sun, of course, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. And the parameters are appropriate. So, for example, we are saying that there are 95 moons, as it were, or satellites of Jupiter. 82 for Saturn and Uranus has 27 
and Neptune has 14. And they are all having rings. So Neptune has rings. The type of Mercury, Venus, Earth and Mars is terrestrial. And Mars has two moons. We have one. And poor old Venus and Mercury, they're not partners at all. They're Billy No Mates. So we add these to the list and we shall have a representation of an ordered list, but only ordered because that's the order we put them in to the list, not sorted. We could have them sorted. If we sorted on the names, they'd be in a different order than the actual order of distance from the sun. But if we did have that parameter of distance from the sun, we would be able to sort them on the distance from the sun, uh, sort them in reverse order. That is the shortest distance first. And then we'd have this ordered list. Now we're not going to do that because it's too many things going on at once, but just pointing out that we could do that. We just, we're not going to do that. We're going to do all the intelligence ourselves at this point and putting them in. If you have a list, you really need to iterate around it. You need a repetition construct. You need a way to actually loop around the list. So, for instance, if I read this off, I'd read this one, then this one, and this one, and it's in that particular order. I'm not going to read Uranus, Earth, uh, Venus, and that sort of thing. As I said, I could be doing that if I was ordering on the alphabetical um, name, right? In which case, which one of them would go first? Hmm. It would be, of course, the Earth. After all, the Earth is the most important planet to us because we live on it. OK, well, here's the list being iterated over. We're using something called a for each loop. And in the for each loop, we have a body which is of type celestial body. And the body value is going to change in the loop. So the body will be initially the sun, then Mercury, then Venus, then Earth, and so on. The type is the solar system. The type? Well, the list is solar system. Here it is, instantiated here, so that memory is attached that we can use by literally adding into the memory a instantiation of a celestial body or a planet or a gas giant. The new here is a keyword that instantiates the celestial body. The new celestial body is an argument to the add method of the solar system array list. This is called anonymous instantiation because there's no name given to it. If we wanted to give it a name, we could give it a name of planet one, or well, it wouldn't be a planet in this particular case, uh, body one, then body two, body, this is pointless though, because we don't care, we don't need a name. All we need to know is that we instantiate it and put it into the list. What will take care of bringing it down to the list is this for each loop. So for each, body so we call that body there right if we said instead of body we said each body then all we have to do here is make sure this matches it and each body each body we invoke 
the display info method then we put out a print line underneath just so we can literally see what we're doing well will this work i'm pretty sure it will so let's close that right click on here and execute the main method inside the main class and here we have the output so we execute main dot main method with no actual parameters to the main method the static void main method has an array of string possibly there as arguments if you're running it from the command line but we're not so it doesn't have any when we run this this is the output we get name the sun we get the um, mass and the diameter and here for mercury we get the mass uh, which is very much very much smaller for the planet and for Venus and for Earth and Mars and Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Notice that the type is as appropriate and as we put into the instantiations as we added to the list, this is what we're getting back out. I mentioned the number of moons uh, and they should match what we obviously uh, put in. So I remember, for instance, that Neptune had 14 moons. I didn't know that before my research. Uh, but there, we go. there you go. You learn something every day, don't you? And it has rings. Right. So that is what we get out. Oh, good. Now, this is the code for celestial body, planet, and gas giant. And what we... Uh, verified was it really hasn't changed what changed was the main method where we put into the main method an instantiation of a list and then we added to that instantiation of a list and then we iterated over the list to display the information should point out here that we need to import the array list and also uh, the list interface so that we can actually do this. Um, we could have um, have here array list and um, everything's fine. So basically, we don't need one of those imports, strictly speaking, but it looks better. Right, so what we're going to do now is run over this using debugging. Okay, so in order to debug, we need to start somewhere. And I'm going to put a start uh, up here. Okay, we're going to put the debug start here. Ah, we need to compile it because I just actually made a little mistake there and press the key. Right, so we're going to start there. And well, how do we actually get this to run? Let's make you, I'll give you a chance to think about that. Okay, so did you think about it? If you can't get something to debug, remember to click the compile key because although it might not be visible to you, um, it could have lost its compilation status. Uh, I'm going to just minimize this because then you'd see that if I click here, right, it loses its status but we unless we're looking at this representation of main class 
we don't know it needs to be recompiled perhaps so if we recompile it and then click on here we get the debug to work in blue jay okay so how do we get it to run well of course we run it here right click run here and then we get the debugger up you may have to say you want the debugger in the um, menu system if you're not seeing that okay i'm going to step through the uh in the first statement here because i don't really want to run into the library <laughs> and see all kinds of detail uh, life is too short so i'm going to just assume all of that happens and the very first um instantiation will happen anonymously inside the parameter, as it were, the argument to the solar system uh, list when it's added. But we just step over and see what happens. Okay. So we step over and we see that it runs to the celestial body class and shows us that we are invoking the non-default constructor for celestial body. I'm going to step into that. And see that we get the name, the mass, and the diameter allocated. And they are allocated as we see in the argument for the celestial body constructor. So I think no real mystery remains about that, does it? And then we go to the next one. And guess what it does? It goes to planet this time and does the super constructor that is the one we've just seen that's in celestial body it executes that and then it executes these two instructions which use the string type and number of moons so we saw that before in a previous session so we'll just do that and keep stepping into and then we're back now I'm just going to step 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 and step okay now we're in the for each loop I want to step into the for each loop now we're in the loop and if I step into this it should go to display information in the body. Now the body will be, for the very first one, it should be the celestial body. Let's see what it does. It goes to celestial body and it steps into the um, display for that. You can see it's, it's down here at the moment and we're going to step into that and step into that step into that and then it prints out the line step into that remember we're in a list here and there we are in the list and now if I step it will go through this list and it will do it uh, nine times the Sun and its eight planets will be printed out so hopefully proving that we have modelled, using a list, the solar system using BlueJay. And there we have it. Okay, so let's just go over what we've done here. We built upon the hard work of setting out the hierarchy for our classes with the dependency such that the gas giant is a planet and the planet is the celestial body. Then, using main, that is the main method of main here 
we instantiate it into an instantiated list a representation for each of the items in the solar system. And then when we've done that, we repeated or iterated over each one of them using a for each loop to display the information out. I hope that's been useful to you.